Ferrari bombshell in the FIA. Ferrari is on the worst start to the season ever since the points were remodeled back in 2010, and it doesn't seem like things are getting better for them anytime soon. The latest blow was dealt to Carlos Sainz and his actions against compatriot Fernando Alonso, and the Maranello team is having a hard time accepting the five second time penalty. Recently, they've taken actions that, if they turn out in their favor, will definitely see their morale being boosted for the upcoming race weekends, and the FIA being ashamed yet again. Join us as we go through the appeal that Ferrari made against the FIA, as well as the controversial take that their new team principal Vasseur has regarding the matter. <laughs> Carlos Sainz and Charles Leclerc had weekends to forget in Australia, and while the first was able to see the end of the race, the latter didn't even have a proper chance of racing as he collided with Stroll in Turn 3 and saw his SF23 beached in the gravel. For Leclerc, I don't have too much to add, other than the fact he is probably considering tectonic changes for his future, given the fact that Ferrari isn't providing him with a championship winning car, something he desperately hoped for after the 2022 fiasco. But while this would be a perfect opportunity for Sainz to prove that he is more than capable of leading the team in the right direction, it seems like the Spaniard is having a hard time adjusting to this role as well. Although he finished the first two races in a mixed order in terms of the fight against Mercedes, what he did in Australia has raised some eyebrows. The penalty for Sainz's understeer into Alonso in Turn 1 of the restart of the race, with only two laps remaining, was five seconds. And given the fact that the race ended the way it did, it meant that Sainz had to be satisfied with P12. This was practically the last place on the grid, and Ferrari doesn't seem to accept the fact that the penalty given to their driver was a fair one. Ferrari challenged the FAA's decision according to Frederic Vasseur, and while the team principal didn't want to offer more details, it's clear that Ferrari's dissatisfaction will not remain in Australia. While Sainz was the only one penalised for his actions, it seems like Gasly and Sargent's accidents were labelled as racing incidents, meaning that the sour grapes Sainz had to eat after Sunday's races were too much to handle. Vasseur hopes that the team will be granted a sit-down with the FIA, as Sainz was literally begging the team on the radio prior to the second restart to ask the governing body and the stewards to have a talk with him prior to their decision. After he wasn't granted what he felt was his, Sainz said that this was the lowest point of the FIA, and things cannot get any worse for where the sport is currently headed. As for Vasseur, he went on to add, What we can expect is to at least have an open discussion with them. Also, for the good of the sport, to avoid having this kind of decision when you have three cases at the same corner and not the same decision. The fact that the FIA decided that Sainz was fully to blame for the accident means that the investigation cannot be reopened until there is a significant and relevant new element to be looked into. So whether Ferrari's appeal to the FIA will be granted, and whether the Marinello team will see its wishes being fulfilled, time will tell. But as far as my opinion goes, this is just as good as beating a dead horse. But Ferrari seems like a team that knows what they are doing, and what I just mentioned earlier about the new element having to be looked into has pretty much been handled by them, so they are not opening this case just on false hopes. Yes, I still think they won't win anything due to the fact that the FIA doesn't withdraw decisions like this with ease, except for the Alonso penalty, in which they clowned themselves as hard as they could. But nevertheless, Ferrari seems to have found some extra car data that was not available to stewards on Sunday. Furthermore, Vasseur provided us with some deep and thorough information as he went on to add, The process is that first, they will have to look at our petition to see if they can reopen the case. Then, we'll have a second hearing a bit later, with the same stewards of the same meeting about the decision itself. The biggest frustration was from Carlos, and you heard it on the radio to not have a hearing. Because the case was very special, and in this case, I think it would have made sense considering that the race was over, it was not affecting the podium to have a hearing, as Gasly and Ocon had. To be fair, it feels like Ferrari is trying to diminish their own weaknesses in terms of their design, and the car not being nearly as competitive as Red Bull, Aston Martin, or even Mercedes. But we cannot help but note that there is a bit of fairness in their request. As far as we're concerned, one point could decide whether you get to be the champion of the season or not, as we saw in 2021, which came down to the last race of the season. From what we're currently witnessing, 
Ferrari is far away from being competitive at the level of Red Bull, and they are not even the second fastest team after the first three races of the season. All this caused some unrest in the Scuderia, and Vasseur didn't stop there when it came to taking cheap shots at the FIA. Yes, I do think that the problems at Ferrari weren't related to their old team principal, and not to take anything away from Vasseur as a leader, but what is currently going on with Ferrari is something that would have likely happened if they didn't go through all of the drama and false hope by firing Bonotto. After all, the Swiss engineer was the one that had more experience working with Ferrari, as he put a lot of heart and soul in the reliability of the SF23, something that he wasn't quite able to finish due to the sacking process. Ferrari looked to bank on the sporting penalty of Red Bull had the competitiveness between them been on a similar level in 2022, minus the reliability issues of the Italian team. But now, it doesn't even seem like the 10% less time in the wind tunnel will do any good for Sainz and Leclerc's pace on the track. That is why Vasseur believes that the penalty Red Bull was given wasn't fair, or as he said in his own words, it was barely a penalty. I cannot help but wonder why Vasseur is focused so much on the penalty of Red Bull rather than fixing the issues that seem to have been looming in Ferrari for quite some time. The team had the fastest car on the main straights in the first race and from a solid P2 that may have had a competitive car to dethrone the RB19 to a P4 that isn't able to finish races due to reliability issues and driver mistakes, Ferrari is on a roller coaster yet again. And keep in mind that we've watched only three races. Who knows what the Scuderia has in store for us? When talking about Red Bull's penalty, Vasseur took a cheap shot at the FIA as to their consistency, going on to add, I think it was not a penalty. It was very low. If you consider that basically we will improve a bit less than one second over the season in terms of aero, you get a penalty of 10% of this, it's one tenth. And as it's not a linear progression, it's probably less, and you are allowed to spend this money somewhere else. But it means, for me, the penalty is marginal. I think that Wolf said it best. For the team that is penalised, the penalty will always be too harsh, but for its opponents, it will always be too little. So that is the rule that we have to accept and implement in this scenario as well. What also needs to be accepted by Ferrari is the fact that no matter if they get Sainz P4 spot returned, the fact that he was slower than Alonso and Hamilton goes to show that there is still so much work to be done in the Maranello factory, and with Leclerc DNFing two times out of the first three races, I doubt that he'll have any high motivation to pursue the championship dream with Ferrari. All of this is supposed to unravel into a huge mess, and during the course of the 2023 season, we are going to see some massive shakeups within Scuderia. Could it be that Vasseur won't even survive the first season with the team? Only time will tell. And when it comes to this matter, we'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below.